of the NFL on EA Sports. As we head towards kickoff, two quarterbacks will be on the field today trying to push their team to victory. It's the Steelers going up against the Steamers. So with kickoff straight ahead, we'll check in with our broadcast team. Here are Brandon Guyton and Charles Davis. All right, Larry, thank you very much. It's the National Football League presented by EA Sports. Today, after a crazy opening weekend, it's on to week two, and we've got a good one here between the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Memphis Steamers. Two clubs here, each looking to rebound from a week one loss as we're underway on EA Sports. This is taken at his four. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. start the drive and a reception made by Dante Moncrief a good start offensively 15 yards on the game's initial play good use of the pass there to pick up the first down it gets a defensive look that they had specifically prepared for they told us coming into this one certainly seems like they're holding all the right cards now doesn't it because of their preparation went back watched the tape studied the tendencies and they feel like they had them down cold and they were able to use the pass against them now it's Gurley so from the 40 to the 45, five-yard run. I know the toss play begins with the guy taking the snap and turn around and tossing it to the runner. But where the real intrigue is, can they seal the edge, whether it's an offensive tackle or a tight end in the direction they want to run the football? If they do that, that's the result that you get, that type of a game. If they don't, oftentimes it's not a very successful play. Another carry now for Gurley. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. So they pick up the first down after the run, and now they approach for the fresh set. Here we go now. Green, 39. Green, 39. They'll need to get the playoff quickly. Now a play fake here on first down. Surveying the field. He's going to wind up and air it out. And they went big on first down. Proves unfruitful. And here's a look at the starting offense. Try again with the arm here on second down. Oh, to escape, and he goes down. Timmy Jernigan in there to drop him, and it'll be a loss of about eight. On play action, they'll throw. Finding time. Over to the right side, caught by Moncrief. It'll be a gain of eight, but it'll also lead to a fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say, I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up. Keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. And look at this. They're keeping the punter on the sideline. They're going to go for it here on the opening drive. the play fake he'll look to throw he's got time in the pocket and this is caught he hits Landry and he's gonna get this one down right to the edge of the red zone of the chalk of the 20. 
Brandon, I have one word for you after that completion for a first down. Lucky? Analytics. <laughs> well, the analytics say they pumped the football there. <laughs> so we're changing the analytics as we go, right? What a big-time play for them and really took a big-time chance. Yeah, big-time first-half chance. And the defense comes onto the field for the first time, and it is a unit that struggled a week ago. So they're looking for a fast start, Brandon. Can they create a turnover early? Can they take the ball away? That's what this unit's looking for to get back on the beam. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Todd Gurley, and it's third down. now play number nine on the opening drive but it's third and long the play action fake they'll look to throw can't find anyone open that is caught inside the five so a new man under center here charles it's the ultra rare quarterback trade and he delivers a strike there and you just don't see this happen very often changing of teams during the season at the quarterback position but they expect impact from him, and they should get it. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. And a really long drive here, and it goes on and on. Out of the gun, they'll look to throw. That's caught at the one. Four yards on the pickup, and that's going to bring up an interesting third and goal. And defensively, these corners struggled last week. They're struggling again here early on the opening drive. And you know that was not unnoticed on tape. So when they saw their struggle last week, guaranteed they went right into the game plan, attack them early, see if they're going to play any better. And if not, you keep the pressure on them until things change. And with the play clock winding down, we're going to get a timeout. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this first quarter. And this seemingly endless drive continues. Third and goal now. The deep, and he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Todd Gurley, his second touchdown on the season. And the Steelers take the ball down the field and score on their opening drive. And he'll put it through to make it 7-0 Steelers. I'm here, bitch. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. They come up in an offset eye. Now the first carry for Le'Veon Bell. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. And this offensive unit should have a lot of juice coming off the big output that they had one week ago. Nothing like confidence, is there? When you've played well the week before, you can't wait to get back on the field and do it again. On second down, it's Bell. A beautiful fake. They get six on the pickup, and the <coughs> drive will continue. It's funny, partner. Le'Veon Bell, when he came out of Michigan State, when I go back and look at my analysis of him and what my grades were for him, I thought he was a big-time player, great potential, but I didn't know we were going to get this player. I was used to a big, solid, thick running back 
But now I've got a full package, a guy who can do everything, as we just saw there, including breaking tackles. But at the time, second round pick in 2013, some people probably wish they had taken him in the first. So the offense readies for a second and four. Now a handoff, running left is Bell. And he stopped immediately there. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a third. Immediately, yard. bitch. And it's possible that today the most important group could be the linebackers. Yeah, the second level, as we like to call them, right? Defensive front has to control things, but the linebackers, they do more than clean up. They help create big plays. a play fake as they set up to throw and he's got Miller and he eventually goes Good play, to dog. before reaching the 30 yard line they give him, give him a quicker, quicker man on the third down conversion they give the defensive guys a little bit of credit they didn't let the deep ball beat them on that play did that no the, the drag that guy could be your safety valve we saw right there yeah and it picked up a first down for him too They go play action here on first down. And this is incomplete. Well, partner, so much for the mismatch. How about the guy at the second level, that big linebacker, able to run with the receiver and make a play on the football? He'll try again with the arm here on second down. They were trying to get the connection with a former Buckeye, Braxton Miller. And it'll bring up third down. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. He'll look to throw. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he gets this down to the 18. Good enough for a first down. <coughs> with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. It's Memphis with the ball here to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. We can throw it, we can throw it well with a whole lot of confidence. And he fires one that's intercepted. A great read and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, get into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. <laughs> if you love pressure, we'll, I see, love we'll it. see if they dial it up this drive. A gain of three, second down. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. Now it's second and seven. Shotgun snap as they look to throw. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. Looked like they had an opportunity for a big play across the middle, but he didn't have the concentration or the focus necessary and dropped it before he could haul it in. Seven yards remaining here on third down. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. 
Flushed out right. Look at oh, the good pick. Good pick, dog. And his guys are going to get the football at the 37 yard line. And now back out comes the offense. And they had a nice little drive going last time. Through the interception in the red zone. Costly. Bad enough to throw it anywhere, but that drives coaches insane when they're thinking about, hey, we got a shot of points already. We're already in a spot where you're thinking you've got three on the board for sure, and to come over with nothing, that's a really tough one for them to swallow. Yeah, will they make up for it? First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Here we go now. Three, 19. They'll drop the throw. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. Sack. He couldn't get rid of it. He takes a sack for a loss of six to bring up second down. On play action, they'll throw. Forced out to his left. Letting one go deep for the end zone. Oh, he almost had it for the pick. A great chance there for the interception in the end zone. Instead, third down. So incomplete on second down. Now they'll look to convert here on third. They'll set up to throw. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. And how about this? Fourth and long, and they're going to go for it. Well, he challenged the play. It did not. I didn't off. challenge shit. That means he lost a timeout in that challenge. And as a coach, you hate that. Don't oh, know if you shit. The advice of the player. You threw it yourself, but it didn't go your way. At the end of the day, it all comes back to the head coach. He has the final determination right, on whether to actually challenge the play or not. In this case, it didn't pay off for him. And that's got to be so heartbreaking. You throw that flag, you probably feel. And this is caught. Oh, shit. That's bullshit, dog. Dangerous wide receiver. His first NFL reception goes for bullshit. six. And his guys are an extra point away from tying this thing up. Wow. It's and we're all tied. This thing is good. Good shit. Come on, yo. It's bullshit. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The Steelers offense now, they get ready to Shame head back on, on me. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive? Or no, you just throw that out the window. I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. When we sat with the coaching staff a couple of days ago, they said attacking that defensive look with a run, something they wanted to do, it was effective. And they were extremely confident, weren't they? Their planning, their preparation, they knew what they were going to get in that defense, and they were able to attack it accordingly. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. When defenses get to the quarterback that quickly, a lot of times it's called a jailbreak. It wasn't quite that fast, but fast enough that he had no time to look downfield and set himself to throw the ball. And as he tried to do that, he was hit, and it forced an incompletion. Second down, this is Gurley. And he got blown up. Losing yardage on the play back at the 44. So he loses three yards there. Now third down. Let's go. Green, 39. Off the 
play fake. He'll look to throw. He's got time. Oh, a ball batted in the air, and now it's intercepted. Picked off by the safety, Calvin Pryor. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Now this offense ready to take over again. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that. They had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were confident enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting. And can Way beyond Bell. It's a foot race. Touchdown. Way beyond Bell. 81 yards. And his guys have taken the lead. Well called, well blocked, and then he just made a great play. That's an athlete going a long way. Yeah, how about the suddenness to it? Just getting there and taking off and going for the defensive guys. Plays like that really hurt. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And two interceptions thrown here in this first half. You hear it no matter the sport, they say the great athletes, they can kind of have a short-term memory. But that's easier said than done. It is easier said than done, but I played with a guy who threw two interceptions in the first quarter of a really big game. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Linval Joseph. Breaking throw to get him for a loss of seven. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. Back to throw here. And that'll be incomplete. It's moving in the wrong direction here now as they face a second and 12. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. Over to the right side, caught by Moncrief. 12 yards is the pick up there, and that'll bring up what looks to be a third in inches. Can't be more than a half a foot. Two minutes to go here in the first half. Back to the booth right after this. Third down, a nickel formation here oh, defensively. The play clock's running down. On third and short, they'll try and pick it up through the air. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Now let's see how the offense still out there. They elect to go on fourth and 11. So they dial up the blitz on third and inches. It pays off. And frankly, they were probably dialing up a run blitz, expecting him to run it in that situation. But instead, they end up back at the quarterback and put him on the ground. And he goes in motion here in the backfield. relatively easy to see. I noticed that from up here. Yeah, it doesn't take a whole lot, does it? Sometimes you get multiples. What I always love on these offsides is when each side points at the other. Hey, you <laughs> did it. No, you did it. They deciphered that one correctly. I don't know if I agree with that. I guess they don't care if I agree with that. <laughs> but, boy, you have to be surprised by that, right? I, I definitely was surprised that they decided to go for it in this situation. But they must have either felt like they either had a great play call on or they're trying to show extreme confidence. It'll be a gain of four, and it'll bring up a second down. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Obviously, this has not been a banner game throwing the football. So what you got to do, you got to kind of down focus, don't you think? Find the tight end, take some easier completions. The interception last drive, there he hits the reliable target. It's a gain of five on the play, and that is going to set up a third and one. And the strategy was evident there. Get it to your tight end and make it a one-on-one -on -one play with a cornerback. 
Who's usually going to win that one? The tight end, but not there. Not in this situation. How about the corner defeating that logic and making a really nice tackle? Really good, smart play by the defense, understanding third and short, guarding the first down sticks, and being able to make a play on the football and bat it down. Mike Tomlin going to roll up the sleeves here and say, let's go for it on four. No, no, no. Go on, go on. Detroit! 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 From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. And for the third time here in this half, it's intercepted. Picked off here by Jimmy Smith. And the return comes to a halt right at the 44-yard line. Now this offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Hurry up, here we go. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Steps away to his left. And he is out of bounds inside the 35. They'll get 23 yards there. And that'll give them a first down. Now those are the ones that hurt defensively. You do everything right. Excellent pressure, good coverage downfield. And then he slips out the back door and turns it into a nice game. Hurry up, here we go. They'll look to throw here on first down. Surveying the field. And he's got some space here. And he's going to be out of bounds down inside the 20. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Now the offense lining up first and 10. They come out five wide, three of them to the oh, right side. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And that is incomplete, seven seconds remaining. All defenders get tired of hearing about their lack of hands and why they're playing defense instead of offense. But in this situation, it was the hands that made the play. Batting the ball away on an attempted touchdown pass. Excellent job, way to knock it down. Hurry up, here we go. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. Eluding the pressure right. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just Bitch. three seconds left. They got pressure there and only rushing three. And there's a defensive coordinator right now who is celebrating not just getting home with three there, but realizing if that's the type of pressure he can get in the entire game, then his pass defense is going to be excellent. He's dropping eight. Where are you going to go with the football? And that's incomplete. So we have reached halftime with a touchdown. That's the difference on the scoreboard. As we'll send you down to Orlando where Larry Ridley has our EA Sports halftime report. Larry? Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. So a very short kick here. This will be taken by one of the up men. Out comes this offensive unit as they get set to take over here. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers, or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half, and they've had ability to see what you've done they're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. <laughs> show them one thing, hit them with something else. They'll go again with Bell. They find some open field here. 30, 10, and touchdown. Le'Veon Bell with his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year. And his guys find a way to stretch that lead. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. But the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. 
And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. A look at the offense now here coming back out on the road for their first possession of the second half. They trail offense first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things work well for us. But sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right away. Shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. See what they have up their sleeve. It goes as a pickup of 23. And it'll give the Steelers a first down. No, 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 no. Check. Patriots. Patriots. Here we go now. They come out here in the eye. First down, it's Gurley. Oh, he's got some breathing room. Give him 18 on that one. And that'll be good for a Pittsburgh first. And a nice little broken tackle run there by Todd Gurley, the 10th pick in the 2015 draft. And that's what you get with him. That full package of speed, power, able to catch the ball in the backfield. Many people doubted him coming out because of the knee injury in college. <laughs> They're seeing the full Todd Gurley now, and it hurts. Time running out here on the play clock. They go play action here on first down. It's complete. This is Todd Gurley. And into the end zone. Touchdown, Pittsburgh. Todd Gurley, his second touchdown of the game, his third on the year. And the we here, bitch. Able to make this a close game again. Extra point now by Boswell. No good on the PAT, so they can't add on here. And our score is going to stay right where it is. I'm Bobos. Well now to kick it away after the touchdown. I'm Bobos. It's a very short kick, taken right at the 20. And they're going to start okay. this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past okay. the 30. And here now the offense heading back out there. And they will simply, Charles, oh. be looking to duplicate <laughs> what they did last drive when they were able to push it in for six. And they hope it'll be that easy, right? To be able to take exactly what happened before, replicate it. They may have to make a few additional changes along the way because I'm sure the defense will make some adjustments, but they've got to have great confidence having scored the last time out. They'll start out on the ground with Bell. And some room to maneuver. That hard running is going to get him over the 40 to the 42. Oh, A nice run there, nine yards. The hair looks nice. <laughs> the hair looks nice, bro. Look, that's running the ball well, mm. but with intelligence. How about him keeping the clock moving, staying in balance? Yeah, even though it's the third quarter, you're thinking ahead, aren't you? This is where your running game can really help you with the lead in the second half. I agree totally. It's not just end of the half situations that you worry about the it's clock. Around. It's around. It's throughout the game. And with the lead, stay in bounds. Make them fight harder to try and catch you. Second and one, and people want to run the football. This is where every back in the league is supposed to do exactly what we just saw there. Pick up the first down. Now a first down carry by Bell. And he's got room. <coughs> and 20. And he'll take it into the end zone for a touchdown. Lady yeah. His third touchdown of the game and fifth on the year. And his guys are going to add on to their lead. He keeps carrying the ball into the end zone, and in this one, he's sort of carrying the team on his back. He's the reason that they lead right now, no question about it. And you talk about on his back, he's not minding the extra weight at all, is he? Carrying it <coughs> just as lightly as he does the football. Yeah, the, what a great performance so far. Those three touchdowns, it's got him in the lead. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And they're hoping to capture some of that magic they had last time out when they were able to put together a scoring drive. But they're still down here, Charles. 
Not the major concern, though, because of what you talked about. They scored the last time out. They feel good about themselves. They feel like their game plan is now in effect. They know how to attack and what plays they want to put together. But they've got to keep it moving in the right uh -huh. direction because, as you do know, they are down on the side. Who? Yeah, I did. Wait a minute. I'll tell you why. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. Huh? Looking left side, that's caught by Landry. Yeah. That one goes for 13 yards back. and it moves the Did you get it? It's a game no, of hell no. and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out at the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Now a play fake here on first down. They'll roll him out right. Now he's going to throw deep right side. And his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off by the safety, Calvin Pryor. And they will finally stop him as he's down to the 40-yard line. Damn. So out now comes the offense back onto the field. And they'll just simply be looking to build off the confidence of the last time out where they scored a touchdown. And confidence is powerful, isn't it? When you've scored once, you feel like you can go back out there and get it done again. Doesn't matter what the defense throws at them. They feel like they're in a groove right now, and they want to get out there and show it. Yeah, hoping to stay in that groove here this go around. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. And this time they go underneath for a simple pitch and catch. And not only do you get the pitch and catch, Brandon, but you're able to keep the receiver moving when you hit him with the drag route. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. That is caught right at the 10 yard line. A good pick up there, a 22. A nice job there, Charles. They picked up the blitz, were able to complete the pass. That had the total feel of a quarterback in control. Red blitz, got him into right protection scheme, so he doesn't get hit back there. He's got a chance to step up with supreme confidence and deliver it downfield for a nice completion. They come up with one running back. That's Bell. Now they'll run it on the toss. And he'll get about four there as he takes it from the 10 down to the 6. And the coach has decided to throw the red flag. He will challenge oh, this yo, play. The bullshit. I didn't challenge shit. And the challenge pays dividends. The ref overturns the play. Everyone gets a bonus on this one, Brandon. The coach upstairs who says a signal down and said challenge it. And the head coach for pulling the red flag. That's all they talk about turnovers, right? Minimizing those and maximizing opportunities. And he's brought down after a good game. It's a gain of 21 that time. And the Steelers are going to have a first down. Looking to speed things up here, going with some tempo. On the toss, it's Gurley. And the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. We just saw another example of how the defense is winning this game. Really at the point of attack, the offensive line is just getting pushed around. I think now as a play caller, you got to give them a little bit of help. Maybe keep your tight ends a little bit more. Maybe the running backs help you a little bit with the pass blocking. But you've got to help them get some confidence because you can't abandon the play calling right now. Here comes carry number 10 for Gurley. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. With the struggles we're seeing up front for the offense today, they've got to think about changing up their play calling. Some screens, some draws, some quick hitting plays in order to try and supplement the run game. You don't totally abandon it, but you try and give it a little bit of help. Touchdown, Steelers. 
Their dangerous wide receiver. His first touchdown here of the new campaign. And the Steelers are able to close the gap just a bit. They'll try and throw for it. And now here is another interception. Down the numbers. There he goes. Picked off by Dominique Rogers Cromarty. Pass the 20. And he takes it all the way back. It's a pick two, if you will, as head play backfires in a big way. Boswell now to kick it away after the touchdown. Very short kick. This will be taken by one of the up men. And they'll be set up with good field position here as he gets this up over the 40-yard line. Now this offense ready to head back out there. Looked like they had something going last drive. Then the interception happened. Will they recover? The memory they need to keep with them is that they did have something going. They were moving the ball on offense, had a nice sequence going. Don't worry about the other part. You can't get that back. Let's go back to what you were doing well before. I thought you were going to say they need to have no memory, but remember the good part, forget the bad. I like that even better. First play of the drive, let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but the guy carrying the ball, he was the finisher. A really nice run. Again, it's Bell. And some room to roam now. And he's going to lay the on Bell. Kiss him goodbye. And all the Man. way in for the touchdown. And that rushing touchdown is fourth. Puts him just one shy of the NFL record in a single game. And we all know he would love to get to that record and even beyond it. But he doesn't need to in order to impress in this one, does he? What a, what a performance. What an absolute great game that he's had here in this one. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. And they're going to have really good starting field position here as that's taken up close to the 40. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Last time they were out, they scored. Still trailing here, though, so some work to do. But it's okay in terms of mindset. Because they scored the last time, they're not quite as worried about being down on the scoreboard because now their confidence is a little bit higher. They feel like they've got something going and they feel like they can attack again and put more points on the board. Are you scoreboard watching if you're the offense or are you just focused on this drive? It, it, we wouldn't be telling the truth if we said that they didn't scoreboard watch. Everyone does it to some extent. But you've got to set it aside right now and just focus on this series. That'll take care of the scoreboard if they punch it into the end zone. And complete to Moncrief over the middle. And it's a fumble. And this is picked up by the defense. Come on, dog. He made the catch, then he turned into a runner, took the contact, and coughed it up. And all I remember as a player, when they catch the ball, when those after. The ball free. Anything you can do to slow them down. down. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. And they're going to hurry back to the line now. Here comes the D swarming to the line. Back now in Memphis, <coughs> Tennessee. As we're about ready to rock and roll for the fourth and final quarter. Escaping the pressure right. Complete. Richardson has it. And he'll be taken down, but not before getting this inside the 30. A gain of 32 that time. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference. In and he gets into the end zone for the touchdown. Paul Richardson. 
His first touchdown of the new season. And the fumble recovery leads to six points. They were oh, still shit. going with a comfortable lead here late, and now that lead even more comfortable. And your first thought is, is there bad blood that went into this one ahead of time that maybe they're seeking some revenge or they just don't like them? But the other thing that always hits me is, are they worried about playoff positioning? Right? Are they worried about, do you need enough points Bitch. in case there's a tiebreaker that comes into play later? Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. Short, short kick. One of the up middle take it now. The Steelers offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And the turnover last time, that's sort of been symptomatic of their struggles here in this one. Good word. I like it, though, yeah. because you're exactly you right. Like that, don't you? All game long, they've struggled moving the ball, turning it over on the last possession. Is that word again, symptomatic? Yeah. yeah. I like that. Your analysis, symptomatic of the success of this broadcast. What I like is that you gave me the word, and I just kept using it. <laughs> Try and start the drive with Gurley. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. They're going to hurry back to the line now. No gain on that run. And while the team is down, there's still time to come back and win the football game. If I'm the offensive coordinator, though, I've got to think about moving at a faster pace and maybe opening things up a little bit and throwing it a little bit more. throw now on second and ten nowhere to go here he lost the football and this will be down the numbers there he goes and he's gonna bring the fumble back for a touchdown so the defense oh, versus the fumble score and a guy on defense becoming offensive there charles and you know they love that any guy on defense loves to pick up the come ball on man to try and score himself in this case that's exactly what happened i've seen it all shower post game so here's the kickoff now as he'll get it again following that fumble return for a score. Come on, man. It's a short kick taken near the 18. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. Second down. Well, they held him to a short gain on that one, and it almost felt like on that first run, they were trying to just throw the jab at him. So, how do you stop the jab? Get closer and smother it, just as they did on that last play. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. The reception good for seven. It's third down. And I see an extra defensive back on the field. A little surprise here on third and one. Partner, it's a lot of fun watching the NFL now, isn't it? Because when the big fella runs routes, it used to be when we were kids, he'd run about three different routes, and that was it. Now he can run anything and catch the balls we just saw there. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball okay. away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. They're already slim. Hopes are going to ride on this one. They'll go on fourth down. Let's go! They come out here in the eye. Here we go now. Play clock winding down. Gotta try it here. He's back to throw. Oh my god, dog. Boy, it looked like he had it and dropped it. And the ball will go over on downs on the short. Come on, side fam. And now back out comes the offense. you all day, yo. Wow. And they'll start this drive with very good field position. All right, here we go. They'll try and start this drive in the air. And it's caught right at the 10-yard line. And 
down he goes, taking it inside guys. the 10, just shy of the last pick. Look, go ahead and throw the ball, man. You got the big lead, you got the clock on your side. Obviously, they don't care much about the feelings of the other team. Either. Well, I'm going to say you better run to the locker room pretty quick after this one. But well, right now, maybe they're just looking at it from the fantasy perspective. More points for everyone if they win big. It'll be a pickup of just two, and it'll be second and goal. Right, I'm going to show my age here a little bit. We used to talk about running backs catching the ball as safety valves. Nowadays, they're a big part of the passing offense. Quit acting like you're so old. You're only 65. <laughs> now they'll throw here out of the gun. He's got under pressure. Down he goes. Sacked at the 10. It's a big loss of five there on second down to bring up third and goal. They'll look to throw on third and goal. And it's caught. Touchdown. Their dangerous wide receiver. His first touchdown here of the new campaign. And this offense is running away with this one. Well, this game is definitely over, but we do know some people like to go ahead and continue to add to their score, don't we? Yeah, I, I don't know that they need to add any more right now, though. I'm just starting to think about those dinner plans tonight, my friend. Well, you and I will be thinking about dinner plans, but we also know there are plenty of people are thinking, how can I get some more scores for my fantasy, for other things? They're trying to figure that part out now. By the way, last weekend we went sushi because that's what you wanted. We're going steak tonight. I'm in. All right. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. And last time out, went for it on fourth down, <laughs> turned it over, gave them great field position, turned it to six points, so they've got to recover here, Charles. It's amazing what one decision can do in the chain of events, right? The decision to go for it on fourth down. Caused all of that. It caused every bit of it, but it showed confidence. Hey, I've got confidence in you guys. Go pick it up for us. Didn't happen. Also showed confidence in the defense. They didn't pick up their end of the bargain. So now they've got to come back out and start over and rebuild that confidence. They're calling a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. And quickly, they get to the line. They go play action here on first down. He's going to fire one. And my goodness, another interception. Picked off by Vontae Davis. And this will be returned to the 38-yard line. Now this offense ready to take over again. And that recipe on their last drive that resulted in a touchdown looked pretty good. So they'll be hoping to do that once more. And it takes me back to when we sat with the offensive coordinator and the head coach. They felt pretty good about their game plan. And but there's pressure comes, and the Steelers take him down. They'll wind up losing eight on the sack there, and it's second down. And we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. Le'Veon Bell! Race. And they are going to score again. Yet another touchdown as they just add to their totals. There's no doubt in my mind. And do you hear that? Do you hear that? It's not scales, right? I don't hear scales. Do I actually hear a tune I being warbled? I think the fat lady's humming. Yeah, she's doing more than humming. She's, she's doing, building it out she's right going. now. She's full bore. Yeah, this thing is flat out finished. They'll try and run it in with Bell. And this time, he'll be stopped short of the goal line. He might have been out of gas after the long run. In any event, the try for two fails. Now the Steelers put a stop to the action with a timeout defensively. It's just their first. They'll be down to two remaining as we step aside here in the fourth. Ah. Tucker now to kick it away following the touchdown. That's fielded in the end zone. And he's going to be out of bounds here on the return at his own two-yard line. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. In this position, trying to get back into the game. Teams are looking for a spark from their special teams. That's not what they got, though. They got a setback, and they have a long field to cover if they want to try and put points on the board.
Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Throwing left side, it's complete. It's a gain of 24 that time. And it's good enough for a Pittsburgh first down. Time okay. for a break. We'll come back and wrap up garbage time after this. Put two receivers left, two to the right. Back to throw now on first down. Going down the middle, and it's complete. And he's taken down, but not before getting this across midfield and just shy of the 40. Now that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield. Those guys made that play possible. 12 yards there as they move the chains. When you see zone defense and you know you've got a drag round on as your primary call, you've got to be really careful as a passer about how far you let your guy go because he might wander into some tough coverage. And he'll take this inside the 30 to about the 29, maybe the 28-yard line. One thing I can say pretty safely, that route is not called if you don't have a guy who can throw the ball and put some mustard on it. Because if you go lollipop it in the middle of the field, bad things usually happen. It takes a strong arm guy who can rifle it in there, and they were able to successfully complete that one. It looked like they had something there, but I think that he was thinking about running with the football before he actually hauled it in, and that led to a big drop. to the 20 to keep the drive alive on third down. Oh, seven, man. Five. Up, here we go. Three, 39. Three, 39. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. He's got time. And incomplete. Come on, dog. Hold on to the ball, yo. Sammy Coates, the intended target there. And that'll bring Unbelievable. Up this nigga's dropping the ball, baby. Going after the football, it's going to be conscious that it's probably going to be contested and often physically. Sometimes that leads to drops. Now with the play clock about to expire, we get a whistle and a timeout. That'll leave him with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. Hmm? Oh. Oh. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays Let's out. Blue 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 Back to throw again. Surveying the field. He's going to let it fly. And now here is another interception. A great read and it's picked up. Past the 10 to the 11-yard line. And that's where the return stops. Now this offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. They have the big lead here late. They protected their home turf well, didn't they? They certainly did, partner. And just think about how good that feels because every team has a goal when they start the year to win at home. 
All right, and sometimes you don't win all of them, but they managed to get that done today. Just think about it. And in the most curious way there to burn some clock. That was wild, and at the end of all that, it winds up a safety. All right, Charles, help me out here. Fourth quarter, you've got the lead, and you run backwards into the end zone. You're just trying to do too much. I almost don't have words for it, but you know every coach that we talk to talks about running backs or people running the football, running north-south, getting upfield. He went way in the opposite direction, and that's going to cost his team. Yeah, it cost him big time. Still leading, but it costs him. No, 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 no. They come Patriots. out five wide, three of them to the right side. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. Over the middle and into the hands of his receiver, Landry. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. And at this stage, down in the second half, looks like they just wanted to find a way to get it in the hands of their playmaker, and they did. I think you're exactly right. I don't think the coordinator is looking at his play sheet and trying to figure out which play. And my goodness, another interception. Picked him for the safety, Calvin Pryor. And the return stops at the 39-yard line. Just mess me up. Offensive unit as they get set to take Thank you. Over here. They have the dream scenario you hope for coming into the game. Just one kneel here, and this game should be over. It's always the final play of preparation each week. The practicing of the kneel down formation, the victory formation. We've got a game in hand. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. Good game, El Chapo. You know it was mad bullshit uh, mistakes, Doug. That one looks like he'll throw here. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. A great read, and it's picked off. And he's just across midfield and down at the 49-yard line. Rookie. And the Steelers set to take the field. Well, this is just an exercise in futility. Do you, do you even bother running a play here offensively? I wouldn't because now is not going to erase what's happened during the game. So after it's over, you're going to go to the film, find out where the game was really lost. But this is not a situation now where you're going to make up for anything. We'll see what they do here. And we're hitting the end of this one, and it looks to probably be the final play. One final shot. They'll look to throw. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that will okay, be dog. complete. As time has run out on this football yes. game. A big offensive explosion helped leading them to mm. victory. And the defensive this guys, they're just saying, hey, okay. put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? Okay. It makes their job that much right. easier when they're scoring that mm. many points. Allows them to play with a totally with different style. style and a different flow. So for the home team here, they make amends for their week one loss by winning their home opener. And they'll get another home date next week as the Browns will come to town. Meanwhile, for Pittsburgh, they'll drop to 0-2. And, and they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. That'll do it for us, for Charles Davis and all our hardworking crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, find us on Twitter at EA Madden NFL. With that, we say so long, everybody.
I'd be on the back there. I looked all over the camera. I had to watch it cool for me. Mmm. You said that from the sub shop downtown? Mmm. Well, you can see it's about the hook. So check it in the stuff in it. They took it, they had two platters, so they cut them up with a big sauce and cut them up in. So you can take, you know, if you wanted a turkey and cheese, if you wanted a, you know, different ones, you can mix and match them. Right in the mashed general? They use white cheese. It's up there. It's up there. I would buy it from Asia. They're gonna go through that. Thank you. 